This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 884. Is it healthy to put fat in your coffee? And should I exercise in the morning or the evening? Both by Ben Greenfield of bengreenfieldfitness.com. And I'm Dr. Neil. Hey there, welcome back to Optimal Health Daily, where I act as your narrator of the best health and fitness blogs, all for free. I cover fitness, nutrition, stress management, weight management, and lots more, kind of like an audiobook, but from a bunch of different authors. And then on Fridays, I answer your questions right here on the show. Now, it's my favorite time of the year is the holidays. So beginning earlier this week, I've been reading to you some holiday trivia. Yesterday's episode, which was Wednesday, was an exception. I stuck to my inspirational quotes. But now it's Thursday, so here's a little bit of holiday trivia for you. Twas the Night Before Christmas was originally published under what name? Ready for the answer? It was originally called A Visit from St. Nicholas. All right, now today I have two posts for you, both from Ben Greenfield. So let's jump right in now and start optimizing your life. Is it healthy to put fat in your coffee? By Ben Greenfield of bengreenfieldfitness.com. You are no doubt familiar with the current craze of dumping everything from butter to coconut oil to MCT oil to ghee into what your grandparents would have consumed as a no-frills, plain old cup of coffee. But there is definitely something to this trendy practice of going beyond black coffee. Don't get me wrong, there are a host of benefits that accompany up to four to six or more cups of coffee per day. However, when blended with fats, cognitively enhancing cholesterols found in the mighty coffee bean, including Cafestol and coeol can cross the blood-brain barrier, increasing the cognitive benefits of the coffee and extending the mental boost to a level beyond that which caffeine can provide. In addition, adding fats to coffee can keep you satiated for long periods of time without the hassle of taking time to prepare and eat complicated meals. It can also boost ketone production if MCT or coconut oil is used. It may also be anti-inflammatory, provide gut-feeding microbiome effects from butyric acid if butter is used, and even provide a slight elevation in metabolic rate due to the thermogenic effect of combining caffeine and MCT oils. So I am certainly a fan of blending fat into your coffee. But you also can't consume oodles of saturated fat in large doses without taking some steps to mitigate the potential damage. For example, the long-chain fatty acids found in coconut oil can cause a rise in inflammatory T-cells that, if left unchecked, can lead to and exacerbate autoimmune diseases or gut discomfort. The short-chain fatty acids found in vegetables can reverse this damage. So if you do add coconut or MCT oil to your coffee, make sure to consume several servings of vegetables throughout the day, especially antioxidant-rich greens, herbs, and spices. In other words, don't have fatty coffee for breakfast, sardines and an avocado for lunch, and a ribeye steak for dinner with perhaps a paltry side serving of vegetables and expect that your cholesterol, inflammation, and other biomarkers to respond favorably. A better scenario would be a fatty coffee for breakfast, a giant salad for lunch, and boatloads of roasted vegetables with dinner. You also have to understand that you are often drinking many, many calories in a fatty coffee beverage, more than you'd think. Remember, fat is twice as calorically dense as protein or carbohydrates, so it counts as a full meal and isn't best consumed along with, say, a big plate of bacon and eggs, assuming you care about the size of your waistline. And finally, a cup of high-calorie coffee will definitely take you out of a fasted state if intermittent fasting is your thing. Because it is unlikely to spike glucose or insulin levels, it is one of the better choices for staying semi-fasted. My three favorite fatty coffee recipes. Without further ado, here are a few of my latest favorite fatty coffee recipes to get your creative wheels churning. I'll provide two hot recipes and one cold. The Coffee Cacao Sipper. Prepare yourself for an intense chocolate sipping experience with a hint of java. In a blender, I pretty much only use a smaller Nutribullet these days for my coffee recipes, as a big countertop blender like a Blendtec or Vitamix is unnecessary, unwieldy, and leaves too much of your coffee goodness stuck to the sides of the blender jar. In the blender, add the following ingredients and blend for one full minute. 12 to 16 ounces of hot coffee, two tablespoons of organic cacao powder, one tablespoon of coconut butter or coconut mana. Warning, both are an ambrosia-like addictive substance. One tablespoon of almond or other nut butter, one teaspoon of Ceylon cinnamon, one dropper full of organic butterscotch toffee or vanilla stevia, 
one scoop of collagen, optional but good for active individuals, one pinch of cardamom or rosemary, also optional, but blending coffee with these compounds may enhance the free radical scavenging and antioxidant properties of coffee. Oh, and be careful when you open the lid. This stuff can get a bit fizzy. Just ask my wife, who has, perhaps more than once, been forced to assist me with cleaning a coffee explosion off the kitchen walls. Next, the crunchy coffee frosty. This next one is a bit more like a milkshake coffee combo with a bit of a superfood crunch add at the end. Add the following ingredients to your blender. 8 to 12 ounces of cold coffee, 4 ounces of full-fat, organic, BPA-free coconut milk or coconut cream, 2 tablespoons of organic cacao powder, 1 teaspoon of Ceylon cinnamon, and 1 dropper full of organic butterscotch toffee or vanilla stevia. Puree until the mixture is smooth, adding water and ice to texture as necessary. After blending, you can top it with or stir in cacao nibs and unsweetened coconut flakes. I'll occasionally even break off a few chunks of a nice, very dark chocolate bar and stir that in instead of the cacao nibs. And finally, a ghee coconut cacao coffee. This wonderful morning brew keeps me satiated for hours and the added cacao offers a nice boost of dopamine too. Here's how to make it. Add one tablespoon of organic ghee. Now this is optional. You can always simply double up on the coconut options I'm about to explain. One tablespoon of coconut butter or coconut mana, one dropper full of organic stevia, eight ounces of hot coffee, and two tablespoons of cacao tea. Blend for 60 to 90 seconds. Now don't get me wrong. There is nothing wrong with a big black cup of joe, but occasionally it's fun to spin the brain's dials with inventive deliciousness. Now I have another post in just a second. But first, flash back to episode 627 last year. It was about staying healthy and avoiding piling on the pounds during the holiday season, a stressful time for many of us. Family travel, meals to prepare, getting gifts at great prices. Need to catch your breath? That's when you need to hit pause and take a moment for yourself. And that's why we're partnering with Calm, the number one app for meditation. Head to calm.com slash OHD right now and get 25% off a Calm premium subscription. Calm is loaded with content that can help lower stress, ease anxiety, and improve focus. Even a five-minute meditation can make a big difference, and it's perfect for beginners. And for a limited time, our show listeners can get 25% off a Calm premium subscription at calm.com slash OHD. It comes with unlimited access to Calm's entire library and new content is added every week. Get started today at calm.com slash OHD. That's calm.com slash OHD. Should I Exercise in the Morning or the Evening? By Ben Greenfield of bengreenfieldfitness.com. Question, should I exercise in the morning or the evening? Answer. Depends on your goals. If you're exercising for sports performance and want to be able to achieve the highest possible intensities during your routine, then the optimal time to exercise is when your body temperature is at its highest. For most people, this is anywhere from 4 to 5 p.m. in the afternoon. On the other hand, your body temperature is at its lowest just before you wake up. So rolling out of bed for an interval training session may not be the best idea. In addition, research has shown that your aerobic capacity, strength output, and sprint capabilities are also higher in the afternoon, but only by 4-5%. to Conversely, morning exercise does have benefits. By jump-starting your metabolism and increasing your core temperature early in the day, you increased your post-exercise oxygen deficit and calorie burning rate throughout the remainder of the day. Therefore, if you're trying to lose weight or potentially burn more fat, a morning exercise session can be highly effective. Psychologically, you may be more likely to exercise in the morning versus after a hard day of work when your mind and body may be tired or you may have too many other duties to fulfill. It doesn't matter if you're able to exercise with higher intensity in the afternoon if you never actually get around to doing it. The ultimate combination and the system I implement for my clients who want to simultaneously build fitness and burn fat is an aerobic morning exercise session of 30 to 60 minutes, followed by a more intense interval, sport-specific, or resistance training session in the late afternoon or evening. You just listened to the posts titled, Is it healthy to put fat in your coffee? 
And should I exercise in the morning or the evening? Both by Ben Greenfield of bengreenfieldfitness.com. Dr. Neil here for my commentary. I'll start with the coffee bit first. We do have a lot of research that shows consuming anywhere from four to six cups of black coffee or plain tea may be beneficial to our health. It may prevent a number of diseases like type 2 diabetes, liver cancer, possibly lower risk for Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's disease. But here's the thing. We don't have as much research that shows the effects of consuming coffee with added fat like butter or MCT oil or ghee or coconut oil. So for me, without scientific research to back it up, I can't say for sure whether consuming coffee with some fat added to it is helpful or potentially harmful. What I can say is that just as Ben mentioned, consuming too much fat, especially saturated fat in the forms of butter, for example, can be pro-inflammatory for some people. It may raise bad cholesterol levels, may increase risk for disease. So you kind of have to know your body. You have to know Where are your fat levels right now? What's your family history? Are you at risk for having heart disease or hypertension or something like that? So think about those things before you try adding any fat to your coffee. But we do know, again, plain coffee, plain tea does seem to have many health benefits. Now, when it comes to the second post and what time of day to exercise, I'll go back to what we discussed earlier this week. Any time that suits your schedule will work. And that's what Ben was basically saying. Look, there's no use in trying to plan an afternoon workout because you think that's the best time to build muscle when you're not gonna do it. Metabolically, physiologically, yes, there appear to be better times to work out to help improve your performance, but it does no good if you're not actually gonna show up. All right, that'll do it for me for today. Have a great rest of your Thursday, and I'll see you back here tomorrow for the Friday Q&A and where your optimal life awaits.